So, uh, so my name's Professor Paul Dunlop, and I moved to Bonkrana in 2004 to uh, take up a new academic career at Ulster University and to raise a family. So uh, we moved here to this development, it's called Elm Park, uh, quite nice open space, lots of new families, a place where we could have raise our kids safely and they would have friends and commuting distance to my work, commuting distance to my wife's work where she's in, uh, works in the hospital in Cardona. And uh, so we came down here and we bought a house essentially off the plans, they weren't built uh, yet fully in 2005 and uh, 16 years later it is now being demolished because uh, of high content of mica, defective blocks and it's now cracking apart. When did you discover this? Because you've had quite a journey even on site up until yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we also float here. We have a, a quite uh, unfortunate situation we're dealing with, with that and also uh, a, a, a mica problem. Um, so b both, both you know, are sort of very different issues, but they have, they have the same, same impacts. Essentially, when you flood, you lose, you lose the value of your home. No one ever wants to buy it. You can't sell it. And now we also have mica and, and we have went through the, the, the testing regime and uh, we've supplied our engineer support to the council and we've been recommended that our house has been to be demolished. So we now have to rebuild back our home again back in the floodplain and it's the same sort of back in the same thing. So we invest all this money again and we're going to end up with a house that's still worth zero. Okay. How is it impacting on you? Because there's no specific person or a career or individual that hasn't been affected across the board with this? No, no, I mean, like, this is an impact on everyone from high level professionals to the unemployed. It's, it's, it's caught everyone out. I mean, no, no one ever heard of defective blocks. In my circle of friends and neighbours, it wasn't a thing that was on the radar. Certainly, we didn't ever expect to buy a brand new home for it to be falling apart 15 years later. I mean, I, mean, I have a, we have had cars that have lasted longer than that. Um, I mean, the whole thing has been completely disgraceful, and it's through no fault of our own that we've been all caught. And I mean, my background is uh, in, in geology, so I understand geology and ge you know, geological minerals. And even at that stage, we, we never would have been aware that there would have been issues with concrete. Cer certainly, certainly issues where they, they, they would feel rapidly uh, in the time scales that we're seeing in Donegal. It's just really disgraceful, really. So lots of people have been really, really caught out badly across the whole community. Would you have bought a house if you knew that this was in the house? Of course not. You absolutely wouldn't. Who, who would? I mean, you know, you, you buy a home based on that uh, you understand that there's engineers, there's architects, there's property developers, there's a planning process that's overseen by local authorities, that there are regulations in place that people have to maintain to, that there's building control, and that that's all signed off by planners at, at a higher level so you know thing you you know it's not my job to do all that that's their job it's the same as if i go to buy a car from uh, whether, whether it's a volkswagen or a ford or a bmw they their job is to make sure the car is safe and when i go to the showroom and i buy it it's it's, it's at a standard it's drivable and it's not going to blow up uh, so no, no one would have ever suspected that they were buying a defective home no 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 one and no one would ever uh, have a, would have took that risk that I know of. Do you feel that the 9010 would resolve this? Because that's what's on the table right now. No, it's not going to resolve it. I mean, it, 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 it hasn't even, the scheme as it is at the moment uh, has barriers to access for most people. Most people can't even get the tests done. I mean, I mean, we're lucky. I've got a good job, and we had a few, uh, some savings. We didn't have to borrow extra money for the, for the tests. I knew, I have mica based on the deterioration. So for me, it was easy to, to, to put the money in to get the test because I knew I was going to get ninety percent of it back again, and at least I would have had a definitive answer. I mean, as a scientist, it's really important for that. It, it took the guesswork out. You weren't any worry anymore about do I have it? Don't we have it? I said, here's the new testing regime. Let's let's put the money in. We know we're going to get it back out, 90% of it back out again, and then we can move on from there. Most people can't even do that. It's absolutely disgraceful. And the scheme has clearly been set up to be a barrier to allow people to access it because I, I really think the government didn't want to address it properly. I think the 90 thing on paper sounds great that we're going to pay 90%. Oh, you get 90% of the cost of a new house, aren't you lucky? 
Well, actually, on the face of it, it's not that that's not going to be a thing. We all know now when you start looking at the detail, it doesn't cover many things. The kitchens, your bathrooms, your you're told you, you, you take windows out, the kitchen. So where are you going to store all this stuff? Um, uh, that that's a major issue. The other thing that has landed on our doorstep it was Brexit, and also this pandemic, and things have just went through the roof in terms of prices. You know, estimates are thirty percent for building material. Uh, our next door neighbour has just uh, they're actually remedying their house from Micah. They they don't uh, they didn't qualify for the scheme, so they've just went ahead and they're trying to fix it. I was chatting to their plaster yesterday. They're waiting for three months for a special type of uh, silicone-based plaster. They arrived, they, they plaster and finished that house off. You know, there are so many problems uh, with building at the moment and cost is a massive one. And it's prohibitive to most people. You know, essentially, we're going to be asked to take out a second mortgage to repay your home. So we have bought our house in 20, uh, 2005. We've spent the last uh, 16 years paying off uh, over a hundred thousand back to the bank plus all the, all the interest we probably paid two hundred thousand off so by borrowing another hundred to hundred fifty thousand we're back to where we were at the very very beginning and that's what's happening in Donegal it's disgraceful it's not and you know the, the thing you got to remember we didn't cause this we just bought a house it's not just Donegal it's also around Ireland and if you have anything to say to the rest of the people who are going through what you're going through, what words of encouragement would you give to them right now? I think it's really important for all our communities who are uh, being caught up with defective homes, which is pyrite and pyrotite, uh, all our defective minerals, uh, that you need, to, you need to come together. There, the issue here is that there's real strength in numbers. Um, I mean, governments can ignore one person, but they can't ignore a million. And we have seen that in Donegal, you know, uh, here, people were quite afraid to come forward. They admit they had mega because you know it doesn't impact on the ability to insure your home. It impacts on the value of your home. It reduces your home to zero. You can't sell. You, you, and once you can't sell your home, you lose you lose social mobility. You can't go and take up a job somewhere else. You're stuck in you're stuck in your circumstances. You know, but by come by Paddy Dover's uh, uh, recent sort of protests sort of reignited people. Um, and it coincided with a lot of people getting engineers' reports back at, the, at, at that time and realizing actually what we're looking into is a real disaster unfolding in Donegal. And that gives people the courage to come forward and speak. And the numbers uh, that have come out on the streets, particularly in the big protests in Dublin, sort of has let the government show the scale of this. And I think that all our, all our communities in Limerick, Tipperary, uh, Sligo, uh, Mayo is obviously on, on this defective block scheme. You know, people need to get together and become united and show that this is actually a, a huge, huge issue that needs to be solved. I think strength in numbers is the thing. And you know, also w once you realize you're not alone, it gives you a little bit of um, psychological support for yourself to get through because the living in a defective home has horrendous psychological impacts for you. The mental uh, stress that it puts you under is dreadful. And myself, my partner, friends, and neighbours, all we talk about is mica. The impacts of mica on our home, where we're going to live, how we're going to afford to rebuild, is there any point in rebuilding? Um, you know, it's just constantly in your head. It never goes away. It never goes away. And then if you're involved in a, in a sort of bit of a social campaign as well too, to try and affect change, then you know you're at the front of that, and you're never getting a break from it. I find it, I'm finding it pretty stressful actually. Do you feel that if this was a car and the braking system was broken, they would have recalled that particular brand of car? Yeah, well, you, you, you'd expect that, that they happen. It does happen, you get recalls when, when, when a manufacturer finds defects, but that's not happening here. All, 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 we're, all we're hearing is basically it's not our fault, we didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you know, I think that's why it was really important for uh, Mike Action Group uh, as part of the campaign to call for a public inquiry. Like the this just this hasn't just happened in Donegal; it's happened right across the country now. It's there's different deleterious minerals that's causing it. It's not just mica and pyrite that can cause uh, defects and blocks. There are other deleterious minerals as well too that can cause defects, and it's really important. Uh, for the aggregate industry to work with the Geological Survey of Ireland, all the professional bodies to understand where you can quarry, where you can't quarry, and how you overcome the presence of deleterious materials at all. I mean, this should never have happened. It's totally avoidable. I mean, this is a problem that has come out of, extra, of, of poor regulations, 
no uh, self-regulation, uh, aggregates may be taken from the wrong place or whatever, um, but you know it needs it needs to be addressed so it doesn't happen again. And there's, there is the scientific expertise and know-how in Ireland to do that and, and internationally. So, you know, rather than sort of, uh, you know, trying to shy away from it, they should be going, right, let's, let's stop this. Let's investigate what happened properly by doing an inquiry and then let's move on from there. So no one in Ireland will ever be caught out again with a defective concrete block, period. I think that that's very possible. One last question as well. We're talking about aggregates, we're talking about blocks, we're talking about building, we're talking about foundations, but the real toll here is on a humanitarian level, yeah. a mental health level, yeah. and we're at crisis point. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, we, I look at one of this community that I'm living in and I don't know how it's going to cope, because this is, this is going to go along, on for a long, long, long time. You know, you're talking about a scheme at the moment, for example, where some people can afford to fix their home, some people can't ever afford to fix their home, some people, like pensioners, who will go to the bank, will never, will never borrow. So you're talking about your community being uh, surrounded by dereliction in years to come, and people coping with that, living in derelict homes, living beside derelict homes, living in situations where they can't rebuild their home, uh, living in, in circumstances where there's no point in rebuilding the home. You know, it, this is... Donegal, in this part of this part of Donegal, is deteriorating and it's not getting any better. And, it, and the community is going to, going to essentially be falling apart. If you get the hundred percent, how is that going to impact on you? It just removes all the stress personally from me and my family, because it means that there's hope for the future for this area, and that's what's required. Hope to rebuild, hope to relive your life again, hope to rebuild your community again, hope that. Hope and uh, that that and and sort of that governments actually work, and that that and and uh, trust that your government uh, actually believes in its citizens, and that 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 actually take care of the people that they're meant to be taken care of. I mean, the primary role of government is to look after its citizens. If they do this, they show they're doing that, and Ireland becomes a place they live in that's worth living in. At the minute, I just look at it and go, I can't understand why anybody would come to live here if a government can't get behind a social cause like this why are they in politics i mean we're talking about families being absolutely destroyed 